podcast today's show at rte.ie slash today with Sean O'Rourke. In March 1964, Beatlemania was at its height, but the date was important for another reason too in Ireland as the first ever driving test was held that year. That was on March the 18th, to be precise now, over 50 years later. And the driving test is still one of the most daunting challenges that faces many people. But a new book aims to help all drivers, as Evelyn O'Rourke has been finding out now. Evelyn, let's look at the numbers here. How many drivers do we have on the roads in Ireland at the moment? We have approximately 2.5 million drivers on Ireland's roads, of whom 250,000 are learner drivers. Now, of course, things have changed since 1964. You now start by applying for the RSA driver theory test at theorytest.ie. And there are 41 of those centres around the country. Then you get the test preparation material. And in that test, you'll have 45 minutes to answer 40 questions and you must get 35 of those correct. If you pass that, then you can apply for your learner permit. And there are 36 national driver licence service centres around the country. And it's mandatory now shown, of course, that you take 12 essential driver training modules. And this is where this book and this author, Kathleen Comerford, come into play. Well, now, what's Kathleen's background? Well, she's been teaching driving for 20 years now. She's very calm. She has a particular interest in nervous drivers or people who've been avoiding driving for years and finally decided that they had to learn. And she set up her own driving school, Sunbury School, because her own father had taught her how to drive. He had advanced driving skills. He had driven a double-decker bus around London in the 1960s. And she says that she and instructors like her right across the country, they teach students to learn to drive safely. They want to help them discover the most common reasons for failing and then avoid accumulating faults during the test. But she's keen to emphasise, Sean, it's not just about learner drivers. She also offers refresher courses because she said it's important for people who may have passed their test years ago <coughs> to return and do a refresher course because apparently some of us develop bad habits over the years and road safety is an issue that of course we must all be aware of and something that she takes okay, very fair seriously. fair point I suppose Evelyn. So you headed out anyway with Kathleen on, on a refresher course um, especially for you. Yes indeed. Right. The, the driver that day was a woman called Sarah Cassidy and Sarah drives for a living so it was going to be very interesting to hear her in action and she was very nervous. She said she felt like she was doing her test all over again but she was looking forward to getting advanced safer driving tips to help increase her safety on the road so here we are in the car Kathleen and Sarah heading out on the road and I'm in the back seat hearing lots of the advice Well it's a refresher course so we're just going to look at her driving and she said she passed her test 10 years ago so we're going to have a look and see how she drives now relative to how she drove on the day of her driving test It's like doing your test all over again Okay, so you're driving 10 years. Yes. So you've clocked up a fair few miles. Yeah, and I drive for work, so I drive like about 45,000 kilometres every year. Before you set off, what do you think you've done over the years in terms of bad habits? What are you going to try to hide from? <laughs> Probably not keeping two hands on the wheel, checking mirrors, but I'm going to try and do them now. We all do that, you know, drink yeah. coffee in the car, all that kind of stuff. Well, can I say that I'd be looking at this from a completely different point of view? It's not nitpicky little things like that, but just your general safety in terms of where you place yourself on the road. Do you need water? I have a bottle of water in the back. I'm grand. Do you want to get it and put it in the front? Uh, Maybe, yes. Yeah, it's really important that you're refreshed. (laughs) And the effect is going to be a better result. So, where are we going to go? We're just going to drive out of here now, and I'll just have about five minutes to just have a look at how you're getting on. So you took your time coming out of the car park there and you looked for space, yeah. even though the learner car was trying to come in. Okay. You needed to look at where you were going to put your car on the road, yeah? Yeah. So I'm going to ask you now when you're driving, where you're looking. Straight ahead and I always kind of... I'm and do you see the red car going up the road around the no. bend? So would you be looking that far up no. the road? Okay, so I'm going to immediately increase your field of vision. Okay. It's really important that you see as much as possible as early as possible. Okay. So there's an interesting chapter in my book called Commentary Drive, which gets you to talk about the road. Do you see the brown van on the left yes. here? And you just move out from it. Okay. Yeah? Now, is that further than you'd normally be looking? Yeah, because I want to take in pedestrians, you, lights. But you don't miss it. This is the interesting thing. Do you not? I don't know. Okay, so this is mindfulness and just conscious driving. And it just relaxes everything. Do you feel more relaxed? No. (laughs) Yes, I do, yes. So that's Sarah with uh, Kathleen, the instructor there. And uh, questionable habits... Yes, this is a common experience for Kathleen and she says she likes to introduce mindfulness into driving, that we all get stressed and actually we need to drive with due care and consideration for all other road users. Now, the main tip that I picked up, and you may laugh at me, Sean, but I didn't know this, that, is that you can hop between gears when you're coming down through the gears. I always thought you had to descend in order from fifth to fourth to third, but she says, no, that's a 1970s way of driving and now you just hop 
down straight from fifth to third. So maybe you do that all the time, but certainly that was news for me. I'd have to, I'd have to be in the car now before I'd answer that question. You can do the little action there and see what you think. But they're, uh, they're the kind of tips I was picking up. So here myself and Sarah pick up even more tips and advice from Kathleen. So when we're driving, we go up our gears because we're going up our speed. So Sarah's in second gear now and she's going faster and she's going to go up to third. And then you're lifting your vision, looking all the way up the road. You can go up to fourth. Yeah. And you can see the yield up ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have right of way at a yield. So we're going to go left. Now just start braking and bring your speed down. Don't gear don't yet. Gear. Brake, brake. Now, nice and gently get second gear. Let's and just see. pull it over. That's where second gear is. Okay. When going down through the gears, you start overusing the clutch, which means then you're coasting, which a lot of people fail their driving test for. Okay. And it also wears out your clutch and it wears out your gearbox. I never knew that. It's an advanced style of driving, but that's what I teach. So you're using the brakes more and the gears less. So the brakes are for slowing and the gears are for going. Okay, so we have an ambulance coming. What, so leave what do we do space. here? Leave loads so of space. Over here? Yeah. And just stop. The best thing you can do is stop with space around. Okay. So you had a man standing at a door at a yeah, car, car and that was dangerous. And you chose to go a little bit closer to the danger rather than cross paint on the road. <laughs> Please try and choose people over paint. Yeah? Wouldn't that make sense? Yes. What's the story with the lines and Sarah? I love rules. Do you think you can't cross the line? Probably it has to be a in major mind, incident for you to It's something to do with not crossing the line. But it's and a I, broken line. Yeah, I know. And what's the rules of the road on a broken white line? In my head, it was that you could overtake. But that you can cross it, like. Oh, okay. And, and then it becomes safer. So we go left at the traffic lights here. Yeah? Okay. People over paint. What wonderful advice. And finally, Evelyn, you talked to Kathleen about her overall recommendations for drivers. Yes, she says courtesy relieves a lot of trouble, Sean. And she believes that if you drive in a courteous way, then others respond in kind. But you have to respect the road and keep looking as far down the road as you can to judge the situation safely. So here's Kathleen's final bit of advice to drivers. I guess my approach is that anyone can drive a car eventually but what I really like to teach people to do is to drive the road so everything is about just creating time and space in order to be safer on the road and sometimes the rules of the road you know like people learn the first line of a song so there's a yellow box junction and they don't go into it because they've learned the first line of the song which is do not stop in a yellow box junction but the second line of the song is except if you're turning right they've immediately got a mark on their test sometimes there's a a sensor box in the middle of the yellow box junction that will activate the arrow to get them to turn right so not learning that second part of the rules of the road is seriously affecting every part of their driving I suppose what I want to talk to you about is why write the book then? What was the purpose behind writing the book? I've been teaching people how to drive for 20 years and a lot of the same stories would keep coming back to me just basic lack of information mandatory lessons were just introduced in 2011 and every time I would do a lesson students would come back to me and say oh mom said one thing and dad said the other so they don't really know and I think young drivers get confused then and confusion can be a terrible thing to have when you're in a car so clarity is really really important. It's also for people who have failed their driving test so they'll get a report back from the RSA so they just have to open that page and look at the areas as you saw with Sarah she was coasting. In 10 minutes I had Sarah sorted out not coasting counting five braking and using the brake more than the clutch also because I get a lot of international drivers from the major companies here in Dublin and I guess really a hope of mine would be that it would improve the standard of driving and increase the pass rate because the pass rate in Ireland is barely 55% and even with the introduction of mandatory lessons it hasn't improved so I would hope that all the time you spend learning rugby, soccer, hurling give that same dedication and commitment to driving to pass your driving test I like driving in my car <laughs> yeah, just finishing there on courtesy, I was just saying to you, um, my driving instructor, well, I had to do it, I think, a second time at least, uh, about 40 years ago. Shocking, Cour- Courtesy is important, but you wouldn't want to have too much of it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. A lesson for life there. Uh, Evelyn, thanks indeed for that report. Uh, Kathleen Comer's, Comerford's book is called Pass Your Driving Test in Ireland, published by O'Brien Press, 9.99. Sport is next. Today with Sean O'Rourke on RTE Radio 1.